Hello friends, I am working on something I'm not ready to show just yet, but I have a lot of small parts that I need to flatten and thickness. They need to be even thinner than what I can do with this small part jig that you might have seen before. So I have decided to make a jig that is a bit more versatile, that I can use for hopefully a lot of thin parts for different projects in the future. I'm going to start with this piece of 2x3 or 45x70mm construction lumber spruce and I will flatten it, square it up and make it as wide as the blade on my number 6 plane. So here's the body of the jig, the workpiece will lay flat on that and I'm going to use this piece of oak as a planing stop that the workpiece can butt up against. And while that is drying, I'm going to cut out a couple of fences from this piece of plywood. And this plywood is the same thickness as that distance from the edge of the blade to the edge of the plane. So when I'm holding it flush on the side there, the blade just barely comes up to touch the plywood. So these pieces will attach to the sides of this block with screws, I'm thinking three should be enough. And the screws will be in slots so that this piece can slide up and down. And that will give me the final thickness of the workpiece that is being planed. So I will mark some screw locations. And on the piece for the opposite side I will offset the screw locations a little bit so that they won't hit each other. And I'm also trying to avoid that big knot in the middle, put the screws to the side of it rather than through it. So this piece can now slide up and down, but I need something to constrain the plane sideways as well. So I have a thin piece of oak here that will be glued on to the side of the moving part, so they move as one. It doesn't matter so much how high it is, it just needs to be high enough to trap the plane and keep it from moving off the jig. I will place the oak up against the screws and see just if there is enough contact surface between the two to get a glue joint. And I think on this end I need to bring it down a little bit further. I think that's going to be perfect. So now I just mark how far down the oak needs to go. So now I know where to apply glue.
and there we have it i think that turned out quite well one um, worry i had was these sides maybe they would slip downwards with the pressure of the plane being just held in place with screws but uh, so far i have not been able to measure any movement at all in them and i have done almost a hundred pieces on this jig now so i've really given it a workout i think i was also thinking maybe this planing stop would uh, get damaged with a constant pressure against it but uh, i mean the it's it's a little bit damaged but nothing that impacts the functionality at all so far so i think this is a jig i will be able to use for a long time but it is something that will wear out. I will have to replace things or maybe make a new jig entirely at some point. But I think the time it takes to make something this simple is only a few hours and that is very much worth it for the, the amount of use I will be able to get out of it. I made it for the number six plane just because it's the widest plane I have. It's the same width as the number seven. And uh, well, it just means that I will be able to work on pieces up to 60 millimeters. You could make it for any plane really if you only want to do narrow things, maybe for making Kumiko or something. You could absolutely use a number four or a number three even. But making it wider just means it's a bit more versatile and um, that's about it i think as far as closing thoughts go i am soon ready to reveal what all these pieces are going into 96 of these parts it's a really fun project i'm in the middle of and i'm very excited to show that off but until then thank you for watching and i will see you soon bye